So as you noticed, uh, we're back again live, not live streaming, but uh, uh, being able to uh, celebrate what is essentially the most sacred evening in our own Catholic Christian tradition. We're doing this united with folks throughout the world and in unity with others like ourselves who are uh, in quarantine or in uh, shelter in space sort of orders. The, the, the thing about this Easter, which makes it so very different and perhaps even very unique and special, is that particular quality that we're all in our own homes, which it has become our own churches. Uh, it's other things as well too, I'm sure, but for this moment, it's your church. Uh, not just here at St. Benedict, but where you are viewing this is also your church, your place, uh, your what we call the uh, local church in, in that sense. So we gather to celebrate those ancient mysteries that are part of our own faith and have been part of our faith throughout the millennium. Uh, it's an opportunity for us here at St. Benedict to connect with you, our St. Benedict parishioners, to know that we journey with you in the context of this very difficult time, that we most importantly pray with you and remind each other of the ancient story, of the difficulty in that journey, stories that are of old, uh, that are part of who we are as Christian people, and this recognition that in the Easter story, we know that Good Friday transforms to Easter Sunday and also an invitation for us to be transformed by the difficulties of this time. Uh, this has been a Lent like none, under, none other. And so uh, it's in that sense that we enter into these Easter mysteries aware of the resurrection that awaits us in time. My dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night, when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life, the church invites her children throughout the world to come together in vigil and in prayer. This is the Passover of the Lord. If we honor the memory of his death and resurrection by hearing his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we may be confident that we will share his victory over death and live with him forever in God. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Christ, be our light. Thanks be, Thanks to, be God. to God. Exalt, let them exalt the host of heaven. Exalt, let angels minister of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud, our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Wipe clean the record of our ancient. 
reproach and sinfulness. These then are the feast of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb whose blood anoints the doorpost of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass through dry shark through the Red Sea. This is the night when a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly buoyancies and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. O wonder of your humble care for us, O love, O charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ, O oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer, the sainted power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth, and divine to the human, on this your grace, night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the works of these and of your servants' hands, and even in sacrifice of praise, the gift from the most holy church. Therefore, O Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night, receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ our Son, who coming back from death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on human humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, now that we've begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the Word of God. Let us meditate on how God, in times past, has saved his people, and in these, the last days, has sent his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that God may complete our Paschal work of salvation by the fullness of God's redemption and let us hear those words that remind us that our God is a faithful God and that our God has walked with us before and will walk with us now. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, 
and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made and found it very good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. that they will go in after them. 
Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic. And he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn, the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant, Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.
Pharaoh's chariots and army he hurled into the sea. The elite of his officers were submerged in the Red Sea. wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day. For what you have once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. We ask this through Christ our Lord, and let your people say, Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come, without paying and without cost, drink milk and wine. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord, while he may find you. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and the snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my words be that goes forth from my mouth. My words shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which it was sent. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
faint and am unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations make known his deeds, proclaim how exalted is his name. Just as Christ was raised from the dead 
by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If, then, we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. So as to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the women in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. You just heard Deacon Ron proclaim, do not be afraid. If there's any kind of recurring theme we hear throughout scriptures, it's that sense of reassurance that reminds us that we've been down this path before. If you listen to the readings, particularly in, uh, for Easter Vigil, for Easter Sunday, and throughout the Easter season, you continue to hear words that reassure us that God has been there from the beginning, and God's going to be there through the midst of what we're enduring right now. In the Easter Vigil readings, you will have heard Genesis, which reminds us of that ancient story that God has been there from the very beginning. You will hear the story of Exodus, people fleeing uh, from persecution and slavery and uh, having endured the journey in the desert, mindful and aware, most of the time at least, that God was with them in that journey. In one of the particular readings that uh, Easter Vigil folks would have heard, it would have been the sense that even in the midst of getting across the Red Sea, as if life wasn't bad enough for them, to be pursued by the Egyptian soldiers and chariot and charioteers, that God was going to save them from that fate as well, too. We hear in Isaiah, come to the water, those of you who are hungry and thirst, the sense of, uh, of God uh, taking care of our, our basic needs and being able to uh, walk with us. Those words were written in a time in which uh, uh, the, the people of God were themselves in exile. And so Isaiah's words of comfort was a reminder to them of the endurance that uh, they were to embrace uh, and God's saving grace that was going to be theirs as well too. The power of the scriptures is that they remind us always of that these stories are ancient stories of people who have had themselves, their backs against the wall, not knowing what's going to go on, what their future was going to be like, fearful and scared about where God was in the midst of all this. And these re scriptures remind us, throughout scripture reminds us of how God has been there for us and God's promises endure for us as well too. But I'm willing to bet all of us have personal stories in our own lives that remind us in a very deep and profound way of how God has enabled us to get through tough times as well too. I'd like to think that we can, that, that in my own life, I draw upon those memories and those times of uh, instances and experiences and periods of time where uh, either my family or myself personally 
we're not too sure whether we're going to make it or not. Uh, and I've shared some of, some of those times with, uh, maybe not so much with my St. Benedict family, but other uh, parish families that I've been at as well, too. Uh, there were times in my own life uh, where, um, growing up, uh, my family was both job and food insecure. I've, of course, made up for lost time, as you can well imagine. But there were times in my life uh, where we weren't too sure what our next meal was going to be. Seven of us in a two-bedroom apartment in West Berkeley uh, with my dad's job sometimes fluctuating and, and not knowing whether we're going to have food on the dinner table. You know, many a day, it's a can of sardines and, a, and, and some rice or a bowl of chili and rice. I remember my dad, um, one, uh, one, I forgot what it was in the late 60s, I guess. We, I mean, we, those of you who are open folks remember Housewives Market, remember Swanson Housewives. I remember going down to Housewives Market with my dad, and my dad would go to the butcher where the fish guys were and ask for fish heads uh, because that was, he was going to make fish head soup for us. And that was our, our meal for that day. Uh, and yet my mom's, the faith of my, uh, my family's faith, particularly my mother's faith, uh, my mom never became despondent in the midst of the difficulties that we experienced as a family. Mom was faithful and knew that God was gonna, gonna see us through whatever difficult times that, uh, that we had as a family, particularly as it, gathered, as it uh, talked about, um, about the struggles that we uh, had in our own lives. Uh, even to this day, you know, I'm in my own kind of way, I'm trying to save parish money, so I'm eating sardines and rice and lots of spaghetti and uh, discovered the joy of uh, corned beef hash, and big hams. Uh, that uh, ends up being kind of my way of being able to connect to those times as well, too. We've been all through those scary times. All of us have. I mean, we've lost loved ones, uh, sometimes suddenly. Uh, we've had our own health and the health of our own loved ones compromised in different ways. Uh, we've had our own financial struggles, our struggles with relationships, our struggles and, and job, death of loved ones as well too. One of the particular, uh, I want to say honor, a privilege and a humble privilege is to lead an African American Catholic parish. And at this particular time, uh, as a lot of the information about the pandemic is unfolding here in the United States, we hear once again, it's communities of, communities of color, particularly the Afri African American community, for whom the burden has been particularly onerous. As we read about the kinds of uh, illnesses and deaths that have taken place in our large urban areas, falling disproportionately upon our African American community. And yet, in, in any kind of sense of knowing the journeys of the African American communities here in the United States, there's this profound sense of being faithful to God. And you hear that expressed in so many different ways. I've had the opportunity of hearing that, 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 that faith, that deep and profound faith expressed. We hear that in music. You know, one of the songs that we hear from our gospel tradition in the African American church is, we've come this far by faith. We've come this far by faith leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word, and he has never failed us yet. Lift high that cross because he lives. And because he lives, all of us, each and every one of us, will see another day. We'll see another day. One of the powerful beauties of this time of the year in the Easter season in the Catholic tradition is that there are two symbols that for us, remind us of the resurrection of Christ, the grace of God, and the power of his love for us through Christ. We see the symbol of light, the candle, which reminds us of the light of Christ, which guides us and gives us hope. Water, as a sign of baptism, which reminds us of our covenant, our covenantal relationship with God, and how God has stood by our side, promises made to us, and we, as we will make in our profession of faith, our promises uh, to God continually in Christ. Uh, one of the things that this time reminds us is that we're not alone. I mean, yes, God is with us, but we are in solidarity with people from throughout the world for whom this is a very difficult time, for whom they're struggling in, in deep and profound ways, uh, being quarantined for as many as we have here in California in three weeks. Folks are getting this 
Things are tough. I mean, it's, it's scary. We're not too sure where the next paycheck's gonna come from. Sometimes where the next meal's gonna come from. Sometimes the folks with whom you are living with are driving you nuts, or and you're seeking some kind of maybe just, you know, just getting out of the house. And even sometimes you can't even do that. In that kind of despair, we hear Jesus, you know, we hear that passion story. Sometimes we think Jesus is immune from all this, right? And when he says, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? That's Jesus saying that to the Father. If you ever get a sense of whether Jesus is aware of the kinds of pains that we endure, just listen to that cry again from Jesus. My God, my God, where are you? Why have you abandoned me? And yet we understand at the end of the story, we know how that story ends. That's what we're celebrating on Easter. It's easy for us to utter those words, as I mentioned earlier, with not knowing whether or not we're going to... When is that, that stimulus check coming in? When is that going to be reflected on our... How are we going to pay all these bills? How are we going to pay PHE, e East Bay Mud? How are we going to pay property taxes? How are we going to pay rent, mortgage, food? Yet we know how the story ends. Our faith reminds us of that. The scriptures that we hear remind us of that. This Easter feast reminds us of that. We know how the story ends. This is not going to last forever. Don't be afraid to seek God's call and God's voice in the midst of what's going on in all of our lives. Seek that sense of meaning. So we in, we in our own Christian tradition hold that that there's something, something that we're maybe perhaps invited to learn from all this. I'm not saying this is all God's will that this is happening, but that in the midst of this struggle, there's a deeper sense of meaning that we're asked to embrace, and we would see that as what, what, what might be perhaps God's will for you. We live in a society, we live in a culture that it's like, I don't know about you, but I like to be happy. I don't know a whole lot of people who like being sad. Uh, but I like being happy. And I have to admit, I'm not particularly happy now. And I know a lot of people aren't right now. In fact, our hearts are heavy. And so instead of trying to seek this kind of happiness and joy, although you know, that's okay, sometimes a time like this invites us to seek a deeper meaning to what's going on inside of ourselves. And we get a sense of that's God, as God is speaking to us as well too. How is God in the midst of this, this pandemic time asking you to change? asking you to adapt, asking you to be more present, maybe to reprioritize those things in your own life. I'm putting down in my mind a list of those things I need to reprioritize, things I just need to just drop and say, you know, it won't work when things are normal, ain't gonna work after this. So those kind of things that perhaps that God in God's own particular way are asking us to do. What, I don't know about you, what I found myself doing, and maybe this is just maybe God working in me, is I. I'm in it being more patient with others. Um, sometimes it gets kind of crazy out here, uh, but the sense of being aware that there are those among us, all of us are going through a tough time. I mean, everybody's going through a tough time. So it's an invitation for us to treat each other with that sense of respect and a sense of, of maybe trying to recognize Christ's presence because all of us are struggling in, in our own particular crosses. We're scared. We're struggling, we're fearful. We don't know what the future lies ahead. I go back to the words that we often hear in our uh, African-American hymnology. Trust in his holy word. Trust in his holy word. This is his Easter promise to us, the power of the risen Christ. Nourished by his body and blood, he has never failed us yet. Happy Easter. My dear friends, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so we may rise with him in newness of life. Now that we've completed our Lenten observance, let us renew the promises that we made in baptism when we rejected Satan and his works and promised to serve God faithfully in this holy Catholic Church. So I'm going to invite you to respond each with a hearty I do. Dear reject sin, so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I, I do. Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I do. 
Do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of obscurity? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting? I do. God, the all-powerful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgiven all of our sins. May God also keep us faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We have come through fire and water to the fulfillment of Christ's promises. In the joy of this holy night, let us pray with confidence. For all who follow Christ, may his resurrection be a source of deeper unity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our world, seeking Christ's healing presence in this time of pandemic, may the joy of the resurrection Abide in us always. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who seek justice, especially at this difficult time, may they be rewarded with peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the steadfast in faith in the midst of our deep and profound fears, May our hearts overflow with love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who gather at this Eucharistic table and at home, may the peace of the risen Lord grow in them during these trying times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. 
for our beloved dead, that they may be with the Lord, and for the intentions of this Mass offered for Susan Santi Gonzalez. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. God of Abraham and Sarah, you led your people out of slavery. Hear our prayers and grant them what we ask in the name of our risen Savior, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my sisters, and pray, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the, the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, name, for our good and the good of all God's church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people, and with sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal mysteries, made by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. But particularly in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is a true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death, and by rising, he restored us to new life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land and every people exalt in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Michael our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Lord, you have nourished us with your Easter sacraments. Fill us with your spirit and make us one in peace and in love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I am particularly grateful, first of all, for you uh, being here with us through the, let's say the magic of video, but through the process to which we are now under and being able to join us for this Easter vigil uh, this evening. I am grateful as always to the many people who made this very possible for us. Uh, to uh, my right and your left, uh, Deacon Ron Tudson, uh, to our pastor associate, Dion Kola, who has been our lector throughout this entire time, our uh, music director, uh, Mr. Lambert Peake, uh, who enriches us with the joy of song and the praise of God through music. Uh, he is uh, joyfully joined. Uh, uh, he joins us as, uh, as Dorgan McDade, uh, who is with us as well. And I don't know how we would do this without you, Ramel Lucas, uh, so our sound and light and technology tech guy, uh, for us old guys like myself, we don't know what we're doing about these sort of things. So I'm particularly grateful to you, Ramel, for allowing us to uh, just kind of share our St. Benedict family and experience uh, with our folks and perhaps beyond. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you on this solemn feast of Easter, and may God protect you against all sin and all sickness. Amen? Amen. Amen. Through the resurrection of his Son, God has granted us healing. May God continue to fulfill promises of healing in our world and among ourselves, and bless each and every one of you with love and care. Amen? Amen. You mourn for Christ's sufferings, and now you celebrate the joy of his resurrection. May you come with joy to the feast which lasts forever. Amen? Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Amen.